Hey, welcome back everybody. Drone Tech here. Uh, today I have this amazing exchange at a hearing involving Matt Gates and a woman named Jackie Peterson, who was a witness for the Democrats during this hearing. And she gets questioned by Matt Gates about an old tweet that she made. And this is actually the tweet right here. She said this back in uh, December 3rd of 2020. She said, my COVID-19 vaccination plan, go to the whitest neighborhood I can find and make sure my dose comes from a white batch. So this woman who the Democrats brought on as a witness is a racial conspiracy theorist who was spreading conspiracy theories in order to get people paranoid about the vaccines. This was around the same time that uh, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris were kind of doing the same thing. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Ms. Patterson, in Chairman Cicilline's introduction of you, he referenced your master's in public health uh, and so I want to ask a question about public health. Is there a different chemical composition for vaccines in white neighborhoods as opposed to non-white neighborhoods? Yes, yeah, so my master's in public health does not mean that I have in any way had any access to be able to examine the different compositions of different vaccines that are provided in different neighborhoods. Hold on real quick. I just want to get in here and just point out that she's not just denying, okay, that she's not saying, oh, yeah, this is a crazy conspiracy theory. Of course, it's not true. I recant No, she's actually doubling down already before he's presented the tweet to her. I'm not sure if she remembered it at this point. But what she's saying is that she just hasn't been able to get her hands on the evidence, get, get it in there to look at these vaccines to see if there are special vaccines just for white people. So, Do you have any basis to believe that, that the vaccines being administered in white neighborhoods versus non-white neighborhoods are different? I don't have any basis to even begin to evaluate that, that question because, again, I don't have access to the data, samples, or anything like that. What about the batching process? Is there, is, is there something called a white batch of vaccines as opposed to a batch of vaccines that would be intended for non-white people? Not that I've heard of. Not that you've heard of. It's interesting. I found a tweet of yours from December 3rd, uh, almost a year ago today, 2020, where you tweeted, my COVID-19 vaccination plan, colon, go to the whitest neighborhood I can find to make sure my dose comes from a white batch. How should we think about that tweet? <laughs> As the humor that it was intended, albeit... Uh... <laughs> albeit kind of uh, a, a dark humor in terms of the reality of the test. Oh, she was just joking, guys. She was just joking. Tuskegee and experiments and so forth in our community. And so there was a whole string of com commentary that we had following from that about how it was a shame that, that we even have to think in these types of terms. So that's where oh. that well, you would, it would seemingly be more of a shame if we thought in these terms without a basis. <laughs> and and I, I understand people, you know, put things on Twitter sometimes that are jokes. And I noted in response to your tweet, uh, uh, an account called Urban Dashboard replied, you have a great sense of humor, but too painful to laugh at that joke. And then you replied, I know it's all too painful all day, every day. And as I said, I was barely joking because it's real. <laughs> exclamation point yeah yeah <laughs> okay so you know she just got done saying that oh no when i tweeted this i was just joking and she you can see she kind of moved into this talk of oh no, i was just opening dialogue and that's something that i think we've all gotten pretty used to hearing from the left anytime they get caught and especially in these race hoaxes on college campuses as soon as it's found out to, that it was a black student or, or something like that, then immediately the media comes to their defense or they defend themselves by saying, oh, they're just opening dialogue because really this is happening all the time. So what they're really doing, they're not hoaxing, they're not lying, they're not you know, conjuring up insane racist conspiracy theories. No, no, no. No, what they're really doing is just, it's highly intellectual. It's like 6D chess and they're just opening dialogue. So people will talk about the real thing, the real problem of, there being white batches and white people getting special vaccines. It, this woman is completely insane. Yes, the so, situation so is it, is it is real, real that there's different, because you talked about a white bat, are white batches real? As I said before. Triggered by the truth. That the, that the reference was putting in context this larger conversation about oh. the differential access to affordable 
and quality health care in our community. No, I, but so you're, you're, not, okay. The the vaccines are free to everybody, and they're available to everybody. You can go to like CVS, you know, CVS or a grocery store and get them. So, so it shouldn't be taken literally. Oh, oh, it shouldn't be taken literally. Okay. Well, I guess my question is, you know, you gave testimony today about your concern over the monopolistic sharing of information, about the criticality of the input of public interest groups, about how we have to stop the politicization of agency decisions. Do you think it damages public health and do you think it damages the credibility of public interest groups like yours when you put out that your personal vaccination plan is to go to the whitest yes. neighborhood so that you can ensure that your dose comes from the whitest batch? Absolutely not. Because you don't hey, think that's I didn't... dangerous? Do you, is that misinformation? So, so how do I know if a batch is a white batch? If I, if Again, I, if I wanted already, to follow, already, you, if I wanted to follow your questions. vaccination plan and I wanted one from the white batch too, where would I go? Again, you're you're being you're being facetious, and, and I've already responded to the question. What? And isn't... so, I'm... no, you, she didn't respond to the question. And like Gates pointed out, she did. She started out by saying that her defense was that it wasn't real. She, you shouldn't take me literally. She just said that you shouldn't take me literally. But she says in this tweet. And as I said, I was barely joking because it's real. But it's just interesting how people like this, stupid people get into these high positions and then the Democrats are trotting her out there like she's this highfalutin person that needs to be heard. And yet Gates is exposing it here as a complete nutcase. I'm not gonna to respond to it again because there's not uh, new information to provide. Well, do you think <laughs> that being facetious about race-based vaccination issues is dangerous because we have seen data that there are communities of color that are more skeptical of vaccines. Exactly. And, and do you think that facetious <laughs> comments like this are, are helpful? So I think that they're important to raise the dialogue about why oh, it is that, that people are more folks. skeptical. I think it's important to raise the dialogue about how what, what, I only have a few moments left. Have, so oh, you're interrupting me. Yeah, you're interrupting I I'm, I'm interrupting you because I only have a few moments left. No, you're, you're what's asking the, me a question. What's the I'm most important part of the dialogue and now you're breaking to understand into my from a white so batch. I think it's not really a legitimate seeking of information when you're breaking in when I'm actually responding well, to the question. It, it's always legitimate to ask witnesses before the committee about their own But it's not, it's not legitimate, to, this, this, it's not legitimate okay, to interrupt when someone's talking. Do you regret this tweet? Do you, since it seems to be causing some consternation, do you regret having sent it? No. <laughs> because it's causing consternation with you, it, it caused you, right? an interesting and an important dialogue oh. that that is not one that I'm the only one having. That I, number of yeah, us are I, having. I think that sometimes that dialogue can metastasize into disinformation and can actually harm the people that you say you're here to help. My time's no, up. No, it actually back. acknowledges. It actually acknowledges the reality of what we all. But think. there's the no reality of, the of a white expired. batch. That's just the time you of you the gentleman up. has expired. So what we have here is one of these far left racially focused activists that seems to be able to say and do whatever they want. And they don't fear any kind of blowback because like who's going to deliver it there? There's no main, you know, there, she's not going to be on MSNBC trying to answer for spreading conspiracy theories that are leading to African-Americans not getting the vaccine. But they always blame it like she did on, you know, past wrongs, Tuskegee, which, you know, I don't understand that anyway. Um, because if you look, the media will break down and they'll separate vaccine hesitancy if you're if you're non-white saying that, oh, well, they have a reason not to trust government. But white people, you know, they don't have any reason, which is absurd. I mean, there's been plenty of examples throughout history where the American government has mistreated white Americans. So it's not like people uh, don't have a reason, whether no matter what color they are, to not trust the government. And it's so typically left wing uh, Democrat to believe that. When you're you're making up these conspiracy theories like she did that there's special white vaccines that are getting shipped to white people so you know the one that you're getting there's something wrong with that one and around the same time you had biden and and uh nancy pelosi and kamala harris all kind of echoing that uh and and even people on msnbc like joy reed joy reed even at one point questioned you know if uh they could trust the vaccine when trump was president but then suddenly when biden's president you know all that goes out the window but the point is all we hear about is how dangerous misinformation and disinformation are uh, and that it's you know it's always focused on the democrats political opposition these people need to be silenced and we need to use the government or whatever means we need to to silence them yet here right here you have this person that's supposedly this uh, highly esteemed brilliant mind that's being called in as a democrat witness on this hearing 
but yet she is spreading the insane racist conspiracy theories. Another thing I want to point out is the fact that this post still exists in the first place. Twitter has not censored it. I mean, there's not even one of those warnings on here taking you to the CDC website or something to debunk whatever misinformation they say was posted. Yet when it comes to left-wingers, you can post these insanely racist, paranoid conspiracy theories without a shred of evidence to back them up, and Twitter is completely fine with that. Proving once again that these policies that they have are really just meant as cover so that they can censor their political opponents. Anyway, just wanted to show you guys that exchange. I thought it was really interesting. Uh, I'll post a link to the full thing so you can just watch it all the way through if you want. As always, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, please hit that like button. Also, check out preparewithdronetech.com. If you don't have an emergency food storage, now is the time to start one. If nothing else, I mean, you may never use it, but guess what? You'll have peace of mind that if something does happen, you'll be ready to face it. So as always, if you like this video, hit that like button and let me know what you think in the comments.